Welcome back to Mike's Monsters. In this figure review, Rigby and I are putting down the controller and looking at a video game themed release with the new Aliens Fireteam Elite line from NECA Toys. I've been playing Fireteam Elite off and on over the last year, and I'm looking forward to the new Pathogen DLC in a few weeks. I highly recommend picking up this game if you're at all an Aliens fan. It has awesome atmosphere with iconic locations and is a lot of fun. I play it with my buddies Ridgetop and Kalem from AVP Galaxy. The Xenomorph in particular we are discussing is the newly designed Glowing Burster Alien, which fittingly gets its name because it bursts, spraying acid everywhere, kamikaze style or when you shoot them. They can cause a lot of damage and we have a good time fighting them off. The Burster comes in a window box display packaging with the figure out front to see. The box is covered in Fireteam Elite branded imagery throughout, and I've noticed the entire line has about the same box, with the exception of the name, description, and product images on the back being different. The back features a quick description of the burster itself and the game with a link to its website, along with production images displayed too. The bottom of the box has information and credits from the NECA team who put it together. The burster looks like it's right on model from the game design. I could be wrong, but I remember hearing that NECA used direct models from the game, so that would make sense that they are quite perfect. Not that NECA's sculpts are ever really off, though. Like the burster in the game, it is covered with bulbous green spots that imply the thing is literally ready to burst at any moment. NECA uses a very bright, translucent green material in some spots on the figure. That light really makes pop when it hits just right, giving a glowing effect similar to what is shown in the game. I really love this feature. It stands out among the rest of the Xenomorphs with these glowing green spots. With the right light on your display, you can really make it glow. It poses fantastically, and right out of the box, this Xeno feels way sturdier and easier to move from any other that I've picked up from NECA in recent memory. The joints don't feel stiff or loose, and they didn't need any heating to make the joints move. And the poses hold perfectly. I'm really extremely impressed with this one. Taking a look at the articulation, the neck has a joint swivel that can allow the head to look up or down depending on the pose, and can spin all the way around with a ball joint connecting at the neck and head that can give some tilt side to side as well. There's a crunch at the abs, and the waist is a slightly bendable rubbery plastic material that has some translucency to it, with some twist and turns at the waist and chest too. The tail has that standard bendable wire that you see in most xenomorphs with full posability. The legs have a double jointed knee and each knee has a double joint, if that makes sense, with another joint at the ankle. There's a full rotation at the thighs. And the legs can do a full rotation at the waist. These allow the figures to do standing and crouched or crawling poses. The elbow bends very well and far with a nice tilt at the wrist for lower crouched poses. There is full rotation at the shoulder with full rotation at the wrist as well too. The mouth open and closes with a hinge at the jaw with a very small secondary mouth in there. It can be a little harder to get out because it's so small. You can get it out for those extended jaw attack poses. This burster figure is one of the easiest xenomorphs to pose that I've ever owned from NECA. I'm really, really happy with it. But let's look at another figure in the line based off of a Xenomorph in the game, which is based off of a Xenomorph in Alien 3, the Runner, or also the Dog Alien if you prefer.
I'll say right off the bat that they're almost identical figures, just slightly different cosmetically. From what I can tell, NECA mostly used the same molds, just different materials and paint jobs between the two, minus a few different parts here and there. If you don't like to double dip or weren't sure between the two, this should help show you the difference between them. The main difference I'm seeing is in the head. The runner has the smooth dome that you can see through with all the details underneath. The right light shows this off really well. The runner moves identically to the burster. And this is really what let me know that they used a lot of the same parts. None of this is a bad thing though, because visually these are two very different xenomorphs, but I can see how one might feel that they bought the same figure twice with these two. Personally, I like them both equally for different reasons. I love the glow effect in the burster, but the runner from Alien 3 is one of my all-time favorite xenomorph designs, and I think it was maybe even number one when I was a lot younger. I really enjoyed photographing them, especially the burster. Getting that green glow to pop out was a lot of fun. I think it looks awesome when the light hits it just right. When you put the two side by side, you can see they are quite similar, but the only real difference is possibly being the head sculpt from what I can tell. The burster is covered with the acid filled spots and a few spikes, while the runner is smooth with the dome on top of a ridged skull. My runner has a slight issue where the mouth isn't able to close all the way. It's like his inner jaw is blocking it or something. I've not managed to find a work around it even after heating it up or anything but it's not really something that's taking away anything from me because I like to have the mouth kind of left open. So it's not a drastic complaint. I've not seen if there's others like this out in the wild though. Maybe yours is better than mine. Doing a size comparison, I'll show the burster in a quadrupedal crawling pose and the runner standing up. These two run a little smaller than your standard human birth xenomorph, with the NECA Aliens Warrior standing about an inch or a head taller than the runner when it's standing, which the warrior says it stands about 7 inches to 9 inches tall depending on the pose. The runner and the burster both list that they also can run up to about 9 inches. The NECA 40th Anniversary Ripley from Alien stands about 6 to 7 inches tall, which shows how much taller the runner can be, and it's about another head or so. The Jungle Hunter stands at a little taller than 7 inches, and he also looks like he's trying to introduce the runner to his pet, the Burster, and the runner is just not having it. The Hammond Collection T-Rex from Jurassic Park, which is not related at all, towers over them. These guys run a lot smaller than NECA's previous dog alien from Alien 3, and that figure had a great sculpt, but I always thought ran a little larger than it should have, if I remember correctly. I no longer have it, but it, I always felt like it was bigger than the other xenomorphs when it wasn't that massive in the film. They really got this one right in scale, even compared to the old McFarlane dog alien 2, and man, I really miss those figures and I wish I'd never let them go. Overall, I'm extremely happy with these two xenomorphs from NECA. They look great on my shelf and they fit perfectly with the rest of my hive. If I had the budget or more shelf space, I'd get the rest of the line with the spitter and the prowler. I wonder if they're gonna make any more species. It would be cool if we finally got a Praetorian figure after all of these years. I've been gaming it up a lot lately with my buddies and solo. I'm curious if you'd be interested in seeing any more gaming content from me in the future.
Would you like to watch live streams or say like compilations of awesome and fun moments like I've had in my gaming videos in the past? Also let me know if you have any of the other xenomorphs in this line from Aliens Fireteam Elite by NECA, and if you like them. Which also would you like to see come from the game in the future if they're going to make more? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please share, like, and subscribe. It really helps this channel immensely, and I'm still a very small voice in this massive sea of creators on YouTube. Maybe a follow on social media? Anything and everything helps. Thank you so much for watching this video here at Mike's Monsters, and I hope you have a really great rest of your day. Ha, ha, ha.